The bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. Business and life are tough enough, let alone throwing a pandemic in the mix. So I have people coming to me all the time as a, a speaker or a peak performance expert. How do we get through this? How do we progress? How do we deal with the uncertainty of everything? And what pushes us to do the things that we don't feel like doing? We know we should eat better. We know we should exercise to be in better shape, but we don't do it. We know we should make those extra calls, but we don't make them. We know so many things about our lives, personally and professionally, that we should change to get better in relationships, and we don't do them. So that got me really diving deep into what it takes to perform at a peak level. And here's what I've learned from the greatest, the top, the world-class, the elite in business and in life. If you don't feel like doing it, what's gonna drive you to do it? And that's your why. As Simon Sinek said in his book, Start With Why, the greater the why, the greater the try. What's your why? Why do you want to do something that's gonna drive you to do it, that you attach some pain if you don't do it, bad things are gonna to happen to you. You're gonna feel unfulfilled. The worse you feel, the more it's gonna be a driving, motivating force in your life. And conversely, attach some positive things that will happen as a result of you doing it. And if you keep those images of negative, painful things that will happen if you don't do it, and pleasurable things if you do, then that's gonna drive your why to do the things you don't feel like doing, to drive the success. And, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the most successful people in the world are comfortable being uncomfortable. They push themselves beyond their comfort zone. They operate in the discomfort zone, not the comfort zone. Comfort is the killer of success. So if you're listening to this right now, which you are, and you're comfortable, I get news for you, you're not being the best version of yourself. You're not gonna win, you're gonna be mediocre. You're not gonna exceedingly uh, uh, achieve what you want to achieve. So understand that the why is gonna drive you to do the things you don't feel like doing, to operate in the discomfort zone, and to achieve the things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to achieve. Now that's easier said than done. The other thing that I would strongly recommend that all the great ones do, I have a podcast show called The Results Podcast. I have legendary people on my show that are much more successful than myself. Dean Graciosi, who is Tony Robbins' business partner, hugely successful, hundreds of millions of dollars. And all the people before him that have been on my show, there is a common denominator of success. Success leaves clues. And they all say most of the same things of what it took to drive their success. No one, no one has done it alone. As smart as they are, as hardworking as they are, they always had people stepping into their life that made an impact. They caused them to go left instead of right, or forward instead of backwards. We are dependent people, not independent people. We all require, whether you believe in the Lord and you depend on Him, or you believe in, uh, you have friends that you can count on, we all get stuck. And we all need people to get us unstuck, that believe in us, that support us, that encourage us, and that hold us accountable. None of us go this road alone. I surround myself and I encourage you to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. In my case, it's a pretty easy thing to do. But I'm telling you, you have to surround yourself with people that are smart, that are encouragers, not discouragers. Don't hang around with battery drainers. They're out there. You know who I'm, I'm talking to you right now. You have people in your life that drain your battery. Life is tough enough without those people in your life. You need people that charge your battery, the battery chargers, the encouragers. Those that will breathe life into you when you have nothing left in the tank. And if you don't think you need that, you need a checkup from your neck up. Because I'm going to tell you, right now, in the NFL, if you look at the highest level of performance in the world, the NFL, the pros, the elite, the half of 1% that make it to that level, maybe it's even a greater percentage than that. When they, who operate at a peak level of performance and get paid buku dollars, when they have a challenge in their life or a challenge on the field, and they have my mental toughness like you've never seen before. And they're conditioned, right? To be great. But I got news for you. When they make a bad play, and they come off the field, and their physiology, their shoulders are down, and they look beat and defeated, the first thing that happens, the very first thing that happens when they hit the sideline, 
is other players converge on them, slap them in the head, hit them in the butt. Coaches come over. They immediately snap them out of that state of defeat, of mental weakness, and move them to that level of peak performance. And they do it because every minute matters that you stay in that, that mental state, that mindset of negativity. That will affect everything. And when I, I come back and you hear other videos, I'll talk about mindset. I'll talk about self-talk. You know, the average person has 50 to 70,000 thoughts. 50 to 70,000 thoughts that go through their head every day. 65% of which are negative. So think about it. 65% of which are negative. What do you think will happen as a result of negative thoughts from negative situations, which you all deal with? What's going to happen if, if you keep those negative thoughts in your head? It's going to affect everything you say, the manner in which you say it, or things you do, or maybe things you should do that you didn't do. All by your thoughts. It all, it all starts with your thoughts. And here's the challenge. Most people, and this could be you, most people don't think about what they're thinking about. And if you don't think about what you're thinking about, it's controlling you. And if it's not controlling you, the outside world is controlling you. With the thousands and thousands, all the noise, social media, is dictating to you what you should look at, what you should do, what you should say, how you should be, how you should dress. So you need to be in control of your thoughts. You need to think about what you're thinking about. And when you do, that's gonna immediately change what you do and how you do it. I'll tell you a short story. My son Kyle, when he was little, every day after school, I would pick him up and I would take him someplace wherever he wanted to go and he wanted to go for uh, ice cream. I got the frozen yogurt, of course, low fat. And we go out for ice cream and um, we're done. And he has that ice cream mustache when we're done. So we hand in hand, sticky hand in hand, we make our way to the bathroom. And in the bathroom, it's one of those communal bathrooms, so there's multiple urinals and multiple sinks. As we walk in, two teenage boys, my son was around six years old at the time. Two teenage boys are walking towards us. And I couldn't help but remember they left the water in the sink running. And I look over at that as they're leaving to leave the bathroom. And I look at the water and my son sees the water and sees me. And we arrive at the water and I'm filling up with all these negative thoughts. And I can't believe these teenagers have no regard for conservation or right from wrong or what their parents taught them. When you're finished with the water, you turn it off. And all these negative thoughts are penetrating my head. And my son, Kyle, in his beautiful, beautiful, innocent way, looks up at me when we arrive at the sink with the water running. And he says, Daddy, isn't that nice they left the water running for us? You see, every situation in life, every single one, you have a choice. As James Mates wrote in his book, Quantum Leap Thinking, you have a choice to either have a CVS or a BVS. A CVS is the current view of the situation. They left the water running. My son chose to make it a BVS, a better view of the situation. They left it running for the better, the greater good, the betterment of he and I. How are you looking at things? What are you processing in your head? So when we left that situation, was my son better off because he saw the positive and that was the thought, those were the thoughts in his head? Or what I was thinking in my head? Who's gonna have better results moving forward and impact people and have better spirit and better energy, better mojo? all the things that affect our daily lives. That's the lesson. So much what you learn from children, but that was certainly one of the lessons that I learned from my son. So as I finish up now, when I do keynotes in front of thousands or hundreds of people, I close with a poem. And the reason I close with a poem is because around 15 years ago, a woman in my audience, her name was Lynn Gidrow. She said my talk touched her so deeply that when her grandmother sadly passed away, she left her a poem. And she said, I wanted to give this poem to you because it made a big difference in my life and your speech did as well, and I want you to have it. And hopefully it impacts you the way it did me. And I read it, it was the most moving poem I've ever read. And I said, from now on, I don't care what speech I give, what talk I give, whenever I talk to anyone, if I have an opportunity to share this with them, I'm going to. The poem's entitled The Dash by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. 
He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noticed it first came her date of birth and spoke the second date with tears. But he said that what mattered most of all was that dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we have, the car, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that could still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel. If we could treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, will you be proud of the things they say but how you spent your dash? It's my sincerest hope, wish, and prayer that each of you listening to this right now will spend your dash in a way that will make a real difference in the lives of your coworkers, your customers, your friends, but most importantly, your loved ones. God bless you. If you'd like to get in touch with me, if you'd like to hear more about what I talk about, how I impact lives, how I transform lives, which is what my world is all about, that's all I want to do for you right now. Again, these are tough times. You can go to my LinkedIn page, Michael Altshuler, A-L-T-S-H-U-L-E-R. Go to my website, which I really encourage you to do, which is michaelaltshuler.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A-L-T-S-H-U-L-E-R.com. There you can get all my podcasts and you can see some videos and you can certainly go to my YouTube page, Michael Altshuler. So a bunch of things you can get and they're all there for one reason and that's to move you from where you're at to where you want to be, to help you live the life that you dream of, help you get through those roadblocks, those barriers, both mentally, physically, whatever it might be, help you become the best version of yourself, which we all should aspire to be. So you can do that. You can email me at michael at michaelaltshuler.com. I'm just getting ready to launch something that I'm super excited about. I've been putting all my time and energy in, and that's called Job Gladiator. And that's to help anyone that's looking for work. So if you're looking for a job right now or you know someone who is, I encourage you. I have a free download. It's not uploaded yet. It'll be ready. We're launching December 6th, 2020. But we're going to help anyone looking for a job. We're going to give them free, three insider secrets, if you will, on how to just write a killer resume to get tons of interviews. If you ever sent a resume out and you didn't get interviews, we're going to show you how to break that, break through that, that barrier because there's applicant tracking systems that 75% don't get through. They end up in the black hole. We're gonna share with you how to get through that, the, uh, the ATS and, and get the interviews you want. We're gonna teach you how to nail the interview. If you have trouble articulating what you need to articulate and you can't clearly communicate your message during an interview, you're gonna get that information as well. And also how to be clear on what your best next job move is, your career move, based on your skills, your experiences, and your passions and how to tie that all together. And most importantly, it's called Job Gladiator because A, I was on the show American Gladiators, and B, it's a battle out there. And you need a battle plan that will help you win. And I'm here to help give you that plan. So it's gonna be free, just check it out. It'll be uh, launched December 6th, Job Gladiator.